The government has announced plans to pardon Canadians with simple pot possession convictions. But does that go far enough? Will pardons provide any help, say, at the border? Meanwhile, Canadian ISIS fighters detained in Syria want to come home. Why can't the government just put these people straight in jail? Let's find out. Joining me now, the Public Safety Minister, Ralph Goodell. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. All right, let me start with uh, the pardons issue regarding cannabis. The NDP are, are calling on you, not your government, not just to pardon people, but to expunge records because they're very different things. If you don't get your record expunged, you can still be stopped at the border and you can still be excluded from jobs. Why not expunge? Well, we looked at all alternatives, obviously, uh, and uh, chose the pardon route. We obviously recognize the, uh, the disproportionate impact that, uh, that convictions for simple possession uh, have had on, on people's lives. So we've improved the pardon process. There'll be no waiting, fee, w waiting time uh, once the legislation is passed, no waiting time. Uh, there'll be no fee charged. And uh, a, a, a pardon is explicitly protected. The impact of a pardon is specifically protected under the Canadian Human Rights Act. So to guard against those questions, uh, whether it's on a job application or a housing application, uh, the, the, uh, the, the human right, Canadian Human Rights Act uh, is very clear about protecting the impact of a pardon but it's still under there. the law. Just so people understand, a pardon, once you pardon, it's just separate from your criminal record. It's still accessible. And you not know, generally accessible. It is not sealed. generally it can, accessible. It can only be reopened in very limited circumstances. For example, if you reoffend. Okay, but the U.S. has said they don't recognize they don't Canadian reckon, they pardons. They don't recognize so expungement though, either. Right, but even though these people are going to be pardoned and they go to the border, will it have any meaning if the U.S. doesn't recognize well, it? Well, on that point, the distinction between pardon or expungement is, uh, is uh, virtually nil at the border. In fact, there's an argument that if the American records show a conviction and Canadian records don't because of an expungement, that it will be easier for Canadians to clear things up if they can actually show by means of the, the paperwork on a pardon that they have been pardoned where they could not show okay, that but, with respect to its but, expungement. But if someone had a criminal record, they wouldn't try to get into the, the U.S. border. If they're expunged, then the, the border guard will look through the record and they'd never see anything no, they, at all. No, they wouldn't because the, the, the Americans keep their own records. And whether we change them on the, on the Canadian side doesn't necessarily mean the change is effected on the American side. They will use their paperwork. And if they see a discrepancy in the paperwork and we and and the, the person coming to the border can't explain that discrepancy then that puts them in a disadvantaged position so mm -hmm. at the border having a, an official pardon is actually better but you still haven't explained why you haven't expunged if your government says that there's a disproportionate number say of uh, aboriginal canadians and black canadians who have pot convictions for possession issues mm -hmm. and your government has admitted that why not expunge why go the pardon route we we've we've improved the pardon process to make it cheaper and faster there's no fee there's no waiting time and the process will be as expeditious as it can possibly be expungement historically has been used only in one case and that is to correct a situation where the law itself, not the application of the law, the law itself was a violation of the Canadian Charter. It violated human rights. And that's why we used expungement in that case when the criminal code specifically and explicitly discriminated okay. against gay people. Andrew Shear told my colleague Don Martin here on CTV that he would not promise not to reverse all this stuff. He said, we're gonna, if we became the government, We'll look at how this is and we'll see if we want to either go back to decriminalization or making cannabis illegal. What would be the consequence of going back? Oh, uh, it, would, uh, it would obviously uh, recriminalize people. And Mr. Shear is going to have to think very carefully about that. Does he want to recriminalize Canadians? Uh, I think he would face a very substantial backlash. Are you going to try pot this summer? Are you going to be smoking pot? No, uh, I, 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 I have not in, uh, in my life uh, thus far, and I don't expect to change. Let me talk about um, ISIS fighters, fighters who had mm -hmm. left, the foreign fighters, Canadians who went overseas, they joined a hardcore terror organization like ISIS, and now they want to come home. Canadians don't want these folks home. They're worried about them. They, they're not sure if they can trust them. Uh, let me talk about a specific case of a guy named John Letts. The opposition has accused your government of contacting a guy who's in the media dubbed Jihadi Jack, okay? 
This guy's been in prison for Syria, in Syria. Uh, has your co government contacted him in an effort to help bring him to Canada? There has been no uh, uh, offer of uh, a repa repatriation. Uh, there's no legal obligation to repatriate. Uh, there is no deal with the Kurds. Obviously, the Kurds want to get rid of these people who come from a whole variety of different countries. Uh, and you can imagine that uh, those people probably want to, want to get out of their circumstances. But these are people who, who left the, the, uh, uh, the, the confines yeah. of, of uh, Western democracy, traveled halfway around the world uh, to associate themselves in a war zone with the most vicious terrorism in, uh, in, in modern history. They have to assume the consequences and the responsibility for their reprehensible behavior. But Our objective yeah. is to collect information, ultimately evidence, so that we can charge them, prosecute, and convict. But you know it's hard to get evidence. Yes, it is. Right, because on battlefield. So these people say, well, what about my wife and kids? Or is Canada gonna, do we have a consular uh, or a legal obligation to bring their, their wives or children home? No, there is, there is no such uh, uh, obligation for, for repatriation. Uh, the, uh, uh, the war zone that they're in, uh, very dangerous. I mean, there's no functional state there. Kurdistan is not a state. Uh, Syria is dysfunctional. Uh, it's it's so what very do do? Are it's they very home? it's very difficult to provide even the most basic uh, consular services that that you would find in a in a normal international diplomatic situation. If they come home, why can't you just throw them in prison under the uh, you, to the you, under you, the anti terrorism terrorism act? If you lead to j leave Canada to join a terror organization, mm -hmm. as some of these guys have admitted to doing, we got social media. Why can't we just toss them in prison and, if and, they come home? And where we have the evidence of that, that's exactly what will happen. But why is the threshold so high? I think. That's it's okay. normal Canadian evidence law. That's why we're a democracy. And what about for the children? Because should the sins of the children, sins of the father be visited on the children? Justin Trudeau had once said, a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. When their families say, Mr. Goodell, my kid, these are kids are innocent, bring them home. What well, do you say? Well, whether, whether they are, whether they are the, the, the terrorists themselves uh, or their families, those circumstances, uh, when we are able to do it, will be thoroughly investigated with the objective of finding the truth and where the, where the evidence is there to justify convictions or charges and, and court prosecutions, uh, charges will be laid and we will prosecute. Uh, and, and understand, the numbers involved here for Canada are relatively small. Other countries have much larger numbers to deal with. The numbers for Canada are relatively small. Uh, but in the, in the last uh, three years that we've been a government, we have made four charges. We have uh, achieved two convictions. Uh, and, there are, and, there are, and there are uh, two that are pending in court right now. How many want, are knocking on the door and want to come home? We, we publish a, a statistical analysis yeah. once a year, we, and that will be forthcoming in December or January when we uh, summarize the numbers of, right. on the best of our intelligence information, how many have gone right. abroad and how many have attempted Is to Is there anybody home. on the verge of coming home? I guess that's what Canadians want to know. Are we going to get a new wake up? There's going to be a newspaper story. This X person who fought with ISIS is now home and we can't charge him because it was too difficult to find evidence. Are we on the verge of that? There is, there is no uh, agreement to repatriate any of them. I got to leave it there, sir. Thank you for joining us as always. Glad to do it.